Hi, welcome to another video. So, Trey has made some really good upgrades, and I wanted to talk about these upgrades because they actually make it pretty amazing. First of all, as you know, Trey is completely free to use. It doesn't even have a pricing page. However, they do use the generated code for training and other purposes, so you should keep that in mind. The same thing also happens if you use something like Gemini's Free Tier API, which does the same thing. Even Bolt and V0 also do the same thing on their free tiers. So there's that. Anyway, it used to have models like Claude, 3.7 Sonnet, and others for free. But now they have expanded the models even more. So now, you have the option to use Gemini 2.5 Pro, GPT 4.1, as well as DeepSeek V3.1, the new model, which is pretty amazing, and it's all fully free without any limits. But that's not all, because they have actually added some cool features to it, apart from this as well. If you've used Trey before, then you'd know that it used to have different chat and builder panels, but now they have merged it into one panel, and they have also introduced something called Agents. Agents are similar to what you have in Cursor or RuCode, but it's actually even better. Basically, you can set a custom system prompt and instructions about how you want the agent to perform. For example, you can make a designer agent that has a customized system prompt for front-end design and another one for testing and things like that. By default, you get a builder agent which is what you used to have previously, with the same system prompt and features. However, one more thing that you can do in each agent is configure MCP servers. So, it now supports MCP servers, and you can configure it to use those as well. I'll show you how it works in a bit. But if we move forward, it has also added one more thing, and this is the new way to give it context. You can now do two things. You can add documents as well as web URLs. You can add docs from URLs or by uploading markdown and text files and use them as context in chats. You can add up to 1,000 files, with the total size being within 50 megabytes. In the web option, you can paste URLs, and the AI will automatically search the web pages and extract relevant content as context. It's actually pretty amazing to see. Another thing is the option of rules. Previously, this didn't exist in Tray. There are two types of rules, user rules and project rules. User rules are basically global rules, created based on your personal preferences and will be applied to all projects. Project rules are rules created for one project and only work in that project. It's basically like global and workspace rules in Klein. I have already told you about the new custom agent capabilities, and it has also got an auto-run capability that allows agents to automatically execute commands and utilize tools accordingly. There's also a deny list that allows you to add the commands that you want to block. There's also a new MCP marketplace, similar to Klein's marketplace, that you can use to add MCP servers easily and directly to your agent in tray. Now, let me show you these features in action. But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. It gives you all kinds of image generation, video generation, and even 3D model generation models in one place, whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Google's Image Gen, or VO2 Video Gen model, or even Kling, or any image or video generator model that you can think of. You can just type in your prompt for a video or image and get it generated in literal seconds. You can also generate 3D model generations with it in literal seconds as well. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emotion 
emoji generator, YouTube thumbnail generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10, and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So, make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now back to the video. First of all, make sure that you upgrade Trey to the latest version. Now, this is the new panel. It is very similar to Windsurf in how it looks. You can see these new models here, including Gemini 2.5 Pro and GPT 4.1 as well. Let's select Gemini 2.5 Pro here. Now, what you can do is, if you click this builder option here, you can see that through here, you can change the agent that you are using. Currently, you'll get two of them by default, which are Builder and Builder with MCP. Builder with MCP will allow you to add MCP servers to it and then use it accordingly. You can just go to the MCP option and through there, you can add MCP through the marketplace or also add manually by pasting what you need in this file text area, which is pretty cool to see. It makes adding MCP servers quite easy. Anyway, if we go back, then here, you can see the option to create agents. If we click this, then it opens up this interface. This is where you can put in whatever you want your agent to do. You can name your agent, give it custom instructions in whatever way you want it to perform. You can also enable or disable tray tools like file system, terminal, web search, and preview as well. You can also add different MCP servers to each agent, which will allow you to customize it further with different specific tools and features, which is pretty awesome. This is good as it allows you to create agents for different tasks and things like that. Anyway, another thing is that if you navigate to the agents view, then here, you'll see the option to configure it to automatically run commands and MCP tools. You can just enable this, and if you want some specific commands to not be run automatically, then you can put them in the deny list, and it will not run those commands. Something like RM and similar commands are automatically added, which is a good thing. Another thing is that it has the new context options. In the context option, you'll see the option to add documents and web URLs. You can just put in long documents and web URLs as well, which is pretty cool. It also has the new option of rules. You can just go to the rules option, and then here, you'll see the option to create global rules and project rules. You can just hit the create button, and it will create the file, which will allow you to type in whatever rules you want it to use, and things like that, which is pretty awesome for sure. I do use rule files, and Trey used to lack in this section, but it has surely caught up pretty fast. Another thing is that you can now also add custom models here as well. Basically, you can now set your custom API keys for providers here, as well as select any model. It also works with Open Router, which allows you to use any model with it. I do believe the requests will be routed through their servers, similar to what Cursor does with the custom option, which is pretty good, but not as well versed. So, there's that. I really like how well it performs, and it is actually pretty good. Also, one more thing is that in the source control, you can now generate commit messages based on what you generate. So, that is also good. I really liked these new updates, and that's why I thought to talk about them. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.